today, today we are going to talk to Prof. Anufi Ashrafa from the Department of Plant Science. Good day, Prof. Good day, how are you? And thanks for having me. Uh, Prof, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Thank you. Uh, I became a researcher. Let me start from my family history. Uh, in my paternal side, or maternal side rather, there is history of abolishing and traditional healing. But uh, as a young person, I didn't know what it was. But I was helping my uncles and my aunties to fetch. And uh, when I grew up, I wanted to study medicine. But I didn't pass enough to make the mark for medicine, so I was given botany. So while I was studying botany, at the stage I could relate it to what my families were doing. Then I decided, okay, maybe God had a reason for not making me a medical doctor, but uh, an educated herbalist. So I decided to pursue uh, researches in phytomedicine and phytopharmacology by testing uh, identified plants that have been used in traditional medicine for potency and also uh, doing the toxicological aspect of those plants. Because in traditional medicine, there is no dose regime. They will say, take one cup in the morning, take half glass in the night. A lot of people have died because uh, medicinal plant is like wheat. The lead, when you take a little, it's a medicine. When you take too much, it becomes a drug. So we take it upon ourselves in our research laboratories and the animal facilities to test after we have confirmed that this they say it's uh, antibiotics, when we confirm that, oh, it's really working as an antibiotics, but we take it further to the animal facility to test for the effect on the liver, the kidney, the heart, and sometimes on the testes of the animal tone. And we end up developing the dosage that we can use to educate people to say, when you take this plant, take as little as this or take as much as so, my being a researcher in medicinal plant uh, is based on my family history. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, what are you currently working on? Okay, currently I have a few students who are compiling medicinal plants used in the management of uh, skin infections, and also we are compiling plants that are used in the management of different. Uh, cancers. So that is what we are currently working on, so to speak. And by the end of this academic research year, we will have been able to come up with a list of plants that is used by the Pasuto particularly in the management of those diseases. And then in the following research year, we will take it further to test and confirm the potency of those plants identified. So currently, we are compiling a list of plants used as uh, anti-cancer and for skin infections. Uh, Prof, talking about plants, uh, looking at uh, global warming, how does it affect the plant? I know global warming affects our pocket these days. How much more plants? A uh, plant needs water in the soil to survive. Yes. And uh, as a result of the consistent global warming, uh, there is increased evaporation of water into the atmosphere, which is depleting the moisture level that the plant is needed to grow and develop. So global warming is also creating the problem in the, uh, for the medicine plant that are using medicine. Because when there is no sufficient moisture in the soil, there will not be efficient synthesis of compounds that are used in, in medicine. 
So global warming affects plants by taking or absorbing the little water that is available in the soil and making them not to be able to develop the capacity, uh, which we refer to in the fragmentation as compound that becomes used in medicine for now. So that is my basic uh, understanding of uh, the development and the effect of plants as medicine. Thank you so much, bro. And then coming to artificial intelligence, what role can you play in the field of water? Uh, for now, I have not had a very big conception about it, but uh, looking at what is going on globally, artificial intelligence could be used in the mapping of uh, <clears throat> areas where, uh, because with artificial intelligence nowadays you can do almost everything. So it could be used in mapping particular area for the development, the conservation of uh, certain types of medicinal plant, possibly for fish or product development. Because I want to say categorically that about 80% of the medicine we buy from the pharmacy have their precursor in medicinal plant. So if uh, <clears throat> we use artificial intelligence to map areas and to develop a product from plant as medicine, we might end up competing with orthodox medicine, and uh, it is still believed that medicinal plant comes with less deleterious effect than orthodox medicine. So we can use artificial intelligence to for mapping and possibly for extraction of medicine from plant and for uh, product development and distribution. Thank you so much, Prof. Are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? Yeah, that is uh, going to be linked to artificial intelligence, not that we are discussing it. Okay. Uh, issue of bioprospecting is the major problem we have been having with uh, medicinal plants. And uh, bioprospecting is just uh, taking the plants from the Wild, checking what is in it and how and how you commercialize it. So the commercialization process has been very hectic because certain organizations who are involved in policy making are making it difficult. So if we can bypass those policies, because there were no policies long ago when our forefathers were taking the plants and they were using. But when we started to adopt uh, Western education policies that are not even acceptable to us as uh, Africa comes into place and now impeding us, this certain areas of our development. So if there is a way we can fight us, then it will be easier for the plant to go from the wild to the market. But today, the issue of our prospecting, policy of our prospecting is in that, in that aspect. Uh, thank you, Prof. And then, from your perspective, what role or contribution can you make to sustainable development goal with regard to plants. Yeah, with, with sustainable development goal, uh, I will choose uh, biodiversity conservation. Uh, possibly because uh, I'm working with medicinal plant and uh, over the year we have discovered that uh, indiscriminate harvesting of medicinal plant has driven some into extinction, some to near extinction, and <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, indiscriminate style of harvesting does not give room for reprocreation. So now, like a plant that is uh, uh, in those days harvested at the backyard, you now go 
10 kilometers looking for it nowadays. So if there is a process of policy development into a biodiversity conservation, although the biodiversity conservation policy in South Africa is a good one, but we need improvement that, uh, that the peculiarity of the policy will be protecting medicinal plants. Because what we have now is general South Africa medicinal plant, but we need to focus on medicinal plants. Although we have found few uh, people who are engaged in medicinal plant farming, but it's not enough. So I will choose biodiversity conservation for South African Sustainable Development Board. Thank you so much, Prof. Yes, uh, approximately how many plant species are now endangered? Mm, that is going to be very difficult for me to answer. Because uh, there is a particular Unit that is SAMI, South African National Biodiversity Institute, that is responsible for the collision of data on such. So, for me, uh, I cannot give the, the, the statistical uh, information or numerical data on such. Only that if they say to me that this cattle can cure diabetes, when I go to check the information about this cattle, that is when I found out. I will find out that, oh, it's endemic or it's endangered. So that is where I am with research in plant. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, what message can you give to aspiring researchers? If the idea is a scale, go for it. You know, in most cases, people sit down to conceptualize, conceptualize a very lofty idea, but when you think of actualization of the idea, uh, no, I can't do this. So, they shy away. But if the idea is very scary, you must go for it. There is going to be a successful story at the end of it. So that is my own research philosophy. Thank you so much, bro. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? I'm a handyman, I'm a mechanic, I'm a plumber, I'm a everything. I just a handyman. Although I play soccer, but nowadays the, my soccer is restricted to some areas that is not covered by canary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. And then, bro, one thing that we always neglect, the mental health. What message can you share with us about maintaining the mental health? That's a difficult one, because I'm sitting here and a broken man. So I cannot make a a good comment on mental health. Yes, because the, uh, <clears throat> the dignity and sustainability of a viable mental health is directly proportional to the way your employer treats you. So I will Thank you so much, Prof, for your time and sharing with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.